Oh, you did? Violence. Yeah. Um, we are in a series right now based on coaches. And I brought in my Russian doll that someone sent to me. Um, this is the outermost container of the stackable dolls. And this represents the outermost layer, which is the physical body or anatomy. What we feed with food and take care of with exercise and sleep. The second layer is pranamayakosha, which is the breath body or the energetic layer. And this is what things like acupuncture and Reiki work with. It's actually what all science and medicine used to work with before penicillin and antibiotics were discovered. And then unfortunately, Western medicine just decided to stick with this instead of also focusing on this. But nowadays, luckily, we have things like functional medicine and uh, homeopathy and other things that are coming up to put the focus back on the vital life force. The next layer that we have is the mind stuff or the monomyakosha. It's the inner dialogue or inner chatter, our perceptions, imagination, projections, fantasies, daydreams, um, even our emotions are included at this level. Then we go deeper. And we discover the next layer is more subtle aspect of the mind and it's the higher wisdom or when we become aware of our awareness. This is the layer of wisdom that also helps us to discern what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, what is helpful, what is hurtful. Um, and we get to determine in that layer, once we are in a calm, even space on what direction we should go, or what choice we need to make. And this is also the layer of our intuitive knowing. So we're at the fifth one now, today, this week. And the fifth one's even more subtle than that. And it is bliss, ecstasy, innate joy, an abundance of love that is not necessarily related to anything happening on the outside. However, you've probably experienced this state of contentment, ecstasy, and bliss. Say when you were on your trip into the Rockies, right? Being alone for that period of time and having the adventures that you had, being in that much quietude, you probably really arrived to that space. And I know you've traveled alone and you did a long hiking journey. You probably experienced the same thing. I know we've experienced this through our meditations that we've had, um, but you can also get this experience sometimes when you're just, and Cheryl, if you're joining from home, at the beach, you know, when you're at the beach and you just arrive and you're just totally at one with the sea and with the sand and with the air and the thoughts just disintegrate. There's no mind stuff happening. But yet you're completely present and at one and feeling the bliss of that space. So I know we've all tapped into it. This is the layer that is the closest to the soul and the essence of who we really are. And all this other stuff can kind of get in the way. So we are living in this existence where we're kind of channeling and floating and surfing back and forth between all these different layers, even in our yoga practice. So that's what I want you to pay attention to as we explore our practice today. And uh, like I said, it was a busy weekend for me. It was my birthday weekend. I had a lot going on. My plan was to get up early this morning and create a lesson plan. And all I had was the discussion. So we're just going to ad lib today and we're going to do a yin yang flow. A lot of us coming in today, we're saying we, we feel a little heavier. Uh, we want to kind of draw and um, we're going to do that in our yin pose. We're going to withdraw, go in and get grounded and try to find strikes and balance. So let's begin in child's pose. So once you stack onto your shins and feet, your arms can now stretch and you can drop down to the brow. I'm also choosing for us to be in more silent today. 
And so the silence on the outside will hopefully start to be reflected on the inside. At first, just notice your physical body. Maybe you're feeling a stretch through your ankles if they're tight. Maybe you're noticing the brunt of the weight coming down closer to your knees and forehead. A lighter touch through the hands. Perhaps noticing as you begin taking deeper sips of breath, how the belly not only swells, but the back lungs can swell as we breathe in and deflate as we breathe out. Also noticing how the front of the weight of the brow helps to trigger or stimulate an acupressure point for the third eye. And this is good for helping to induce a state of mental peace. Continue with your conscious breath work, allowing that breath work to carry you towards the inner layer of the mind. And not just the monkey mind, but slowing that aspect down so you can step into the intuitive part of your mind. And our goal today will be to discover and find that inner bliss. Take three more deep breaths. On your next inhale, lift the brow up, slide your hands forward and out, rock up to hands and knees, and as you exhale, curl your toes, lift up and back to downward facing dog. This is not typically our first pose, but just check in with your body. Are you powering down enough through your hands and feet? Are you elongating your limbs as much as you possibly can? Are you turning your sits bones skyward so that you're lengthening that space in the low back and low belly? And then after mustering up awareness with your physical form and exertion, where is your breath? Can you breathe in a mindful way? On your next in-breath, let's go ahead and step the hands back towards the toes, land the heels to the sticky mat, soften and bend your knees, and be in the more yin style of Uttanasana, which is called dangling pose. Now, oftentimes in our active practice, I'll say rock forward towards the toes, but in the end, it doesn't matter as much. So just create that soft bend in the knees, let the upper body hang down, arms loosening, neck loosening, and close your eyes. The sensation may be growing. The sensation is part of that first layer. It's okay to be in that layer, but see if you can drop below it or go beyond it. So one thing that can help is sending out a longer, deeper, slower exhalation. That's difficult to manage through the nose. You can always breathe out the mouth.
I, this affirmation, to fill up some mind space. Nothing, no one on this earth can hold me down or back. Maybe you want to complete that affirmation with something that pertains to the now. Nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back for fulfilling my purpose, for living the life of my dreams, from setting healthy boundaries. Take one more deep breath. See if you can scale down slightly more. And then go ahead and begin to heel toe the feet apart. So either side of the sticky mat, hands to the waist, and slowly come up to stand. When you come up to stand, the arms are going to reach up like in a Y type shape, fingertips playing nice and wide. And then on your exhalation, you're going to slowly hang the right arm down beside the right leg, curving in that same direction, and then flopping the left arm over the top of the head. So get really stationed and heavy in the feet. Wilt over to this one side and then breathe into your left side. Crack open any hardness that may have been structured around this side of your heart. Metaphysically speaking, let the light in. A couple more breaths. Now that top arm is going to start to hang down in front of your chest and belly. And then you're going to bow the head chin towards the chest. And we're going to take slow motion. We're going to hang down a few inches and pause. And then we're going to sail down a couple more inches. Hold and breathe. This is going to really target the QL muscle. Travel down a bit more and then hold and breathe. A little bit more. Hold and breathe. And you're checking in along the way, physically speaking. And you're continuing this activity, holding and then descending. And then holding some more. And at somewhere along this pathway, you're going to find the need to stay. And it may not be at your edge with the forward fold. Like I'm going to my edge with the forward fold, and now I don't feel the QL that where I need it. So I'm coming about halfway up for my body. So check in with your body. This is one of the harder muscles to target, to stretch. Now scoop the belly in and allow the back of the left shoulder to slowly roll you up. And then once you come up to stand, the head will come up last. And then inhale, splay the arms up overhead again. As you exhale, you're going to build it over now to the left side. The left arm just takes free. The top arm is going to eventually C curve and rest on top of the head. Feel as though your feet are dropping down into wet sand, anchoring you here, so that if you want to close your eyes, you may. Ballooning the right long. 
Cutting through any tension here. Letting the light in on this side of the heart. Keep the breath wide open, affirming to yourself mentally, strength and courage fill up my body cells. The strength and courage make it through whatever life throws our way. And let that top arm start to dangle and then drop the chin towards your chest. And then again, slow motion, moving down a few inches and pouring down over the left leg, holding for a couple rounds of breath and then travel down a little bit more. And you're continuing that process a few inches each time, checking in. Remember, it may not be necessarily at the edge of the forward fold. We're trying to target this muscle in the low back area that moves up into the mid back region. You go all the way down to your edge and then felt like you needed it somewhere else, then come back to that space. And that's the layer of your intuitive knowing, checking in with the outermost layer, the physical body to determine this is where it's at for you. Now, instead of Going all the way down to walk the hands forward. We're actually going to use the back of the right shoulder to roll up again, like we did on that previous side, letting the head come up last. And then the hands are going to come to prayer position at the heart. The feet are going to walk closer together. We're going to do a walking meditation to the top of the mat. So inhale, step your left foot forward. Exhale, contact down through the arch and the ball of the foot. Inhale, pick up the back foot. Step it through on the exhale. Inhale, lift the left foot. Exhale, notice the texture beneath the feet. Taking your time, coming up to the top. A walking meditation is something you can really implement anywhere. Lift the arms up overhead, come to that upward worship at the top. And as you exhale, spray the arms behind your back and link your fingers together. Shoulders roll back, chest opens fully. And then as you exhale, bend the knees and drape over your thighs. All right, so we're gonna be a mixture today of active and passive poses, yin and yang. We are going to flow as well. Now that we've opened up the body a little bit, inhale, remove your hands apart, swing the arms back up to Utkatasana chair pose. And as you exhale, dive over straight legs, Uttanasana, completely different structure than dangling pose. Inhale, lift and lengthen out halfway. As you exhale, bring the hands to plant down, walk it back to plank and lower down to your chaturanga. As you inhale, lay on the knees, lift to upward facing dog. Notice how the pelvis is off the floor. Drop the shoulder blades down the back, lengthen up to the sides of your neck. But as you exhale, you're coming down to the rim of the pelvis, down to the low belly, long enough to slide the hands forward and away from your shoulders. The hands are a little wider than shoulder distance apart, slightly dialing away from each other. 
And I would ask that you separate your feet because that helps to loosen the legs, the glutes, and the low back. So we're not trying to fire the muscles up in the back or fire the muscles up through the legs or the buttocks in this skin form of seal. Feel free to keep the head up, feel free to close your eyes. Feel the weight at the pubic bone. It's a similar foundation to cobra. Feel the compression in your low back. If that's too much, lower the suit's on. Channel the breath up and down the vertebrae. As you exhale, we're going to slowly come back towards the chest. The feet are going to slide closer together. And the hands are not going to stop here under the shoulders. They're actually going to slide back more at the base of your ribs. So that when you inhale, lift, you're back in upward facing dog. Right? This is a more muscular position. Your glutes are squeezing. Your, your arms are stacked and strong. Curl the toes under, pop up plank. So basically elevating the belly and hips, front of the thighs. Exhale, take downward facing dog. From taking out of Mulka Svanasana, inhale, lift your left leg up. Step it all the way to the front of the mat. You're going to slowly lift your arms, coming into crescent lunge. But from crescent lunge, we're going to bring the hands to prayer position and we're going to bend the back knee and just hang out here to work out the stretch in that iliopsoas. Gaze straight ahead with your eyes. You may start to shimmy or shake a little bit. Energy is vibration, don't let it alarm you. On your next out breath, go ahead and sit down to the knee, untuck the toes, bring the hands to frame the front foot. And then you're going to allow the shoulder and chest to plop onto the knee and the head to bow. One of our dragon poses. Surrender the hips downward. Surrender the head downward. Listen to your breath. Inhale, slowly lift the head up, curl the back toes under, and push the right toes into the floor. And when you press into the toes, you're going to feel the quads fire up more. Now see if you can elevate yourself back up, continuing to push into that back foot, hands back on the front knee. If that's too much for your system, you can drop your hands back down. And that is that fourth layer of discernment. Last breath, and then we'll bring the hands down. We'll untuck the back toes, back the hips up, slide the left foot behind your right wrist, lower back to the shin, slide your right leg farther back so that you're taking pigeon. Now we're gonna do an active pigeon first. So the fingertips are gonna walk in towards the hips. So we don't want the hips to drag down. So we're gonna karate chop the foot being on the knife side, maybe even elevating the heel off the floor. 
drawing up through the pelvic floor, drawing up through the navel, maybe taking the arms up, maybe striking the back in. Exhale, hands release. The foot relaxes. Good. Sink the hips and lower. A great time to practice some self reflection. This may or may not be a pleasant pose or sensation for you, but if it is, this is one of those poses where you might be able to tap into this fifth layer of contentment and bliss. I'm going to let you be in some silence. Last breath. Bringing breath slowly build up from here. Walk your hands over to the right. And what you're attempting to do, you're trying to stay on top of that right thigh and knee instead of rolling out to the side. So try to stay on top of it. Pick up the right foot. Maybe take your hand to hold it. If you hold it, hold it to the inside, like the big toe side. So swap your hand position, Amanda. Yeah. And that'll keep the heel over instead of flopping towards the tailbone. It's moving towards the outer portion of your thigh. And you can also use your hand as a lever to draw it in closer. Always reminds me of Vegas. <laughs> I don't even think they have the levers anymore. I haven't been in so long. You can even take your foot into the crook of the arm. Mermaid. We've been talking about water. I didn't see a circuit in this one, but. Oh, really? Well, you have some good range already. That's excellent. Exhale, we're going to release the foot. Whew. Hands around. Curl the back toes. Step it into plank. Feel that action and activity from your thighs flushing out. Rock forward, lower down to your chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, rise to upward facing dog. And as you exhale, you're coming down. Long enough to slide the hands forward. And then you're going to prop right back up and separate your feet. That separation of the feet will loosen the lower body. Again, if this is too much for your low back, if you feel like you're crushing one of your discs or if it's pinching a nerve, absolutely come out, drop lower. I was coming in talking about feeling a little heavy. So back bends are known for 
for being a mood enhancer. Feel free to add in this affirmation into your thought streams. I rise joyfully to greet each and every new opportunity. Exhale, we're gonna roll it down and we're gonna transition back through up dog. So the hands have to be stationed at the base ribs, legs closer together and lengthening back behind you. Buttocks is firm, inhale, come off the floor with your hips, curl your toes, rock and roll back, downward facing dog. From Adamukasvanasana, we'll hit that sequence to the right. So inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, swing the foot all the way through between the hands. Good. When you're ready, come up to your crescent. And then hands to prayer. And we're going to bend the back knee. This is where you might make it some of that energetic vibration or quivering. As long as it's not sharp or shooting pain, it's okay. Fixate your eyes at one place. This muscle we're working uh, ties back in with trauma. We've all been through a collective trauma. We're all going to be healing at different levels and layers at different points in time. But it's important we hold space for each other. All right, we're gonna come on down to that back knee. For now, untuck the back toes, flop onto the right knee, and bow your head. Close your eyes. Magnify your breath. Connect with source energy. And connect to your higher self. Try not to resist the pull of gravity, and yet we're feeling drawn to gravity. We want the influence of gravity. One thing that makes it a grounding practice. And we're going to lift the head up, curl the back toes under, and push back into your toes. They all five may not even be touching the floor. That's okay. Maybe it's just the first couple or the first three. And then we're going to come up higher if that's available, stacking the hands to the right knee, elevating the spine.
couple more breaths. Then we'll bring the hands down. We'll untap the back toes. We'll shift the hips back. We'll slide the right foot behind the left hand. And we'll sink down and prepare for that upward pigeon. Once your right leg slides back, hands walk in. Uh, karate chop that right foot. Activate your bandhas, your infrastructure, root lock, belly lock. You can sell the arms straight up or you can arch back. And then hands down, soften your right foot, sink down through your pelvis, walk it out and lower down. And have this contemplative time just for you. The storage containers of your hips about the same, or is one holding more? And you let go. So as a reminder, this year is supposed to be a lot about water. Water is coming up a lot. Jupiter and Neptune are having a conjunction April 12th. And it's the first time this has happened since 1856. And that was the floods of Europe. Mentioning this because the hips correlate back to the element of water and how well we are able to adapt and flow with change. Keep that in mind in the next few days and weeks ahead. Inhale, slowly start to come up, but you're going to walk your hands over to the left. Again, staying on the top of that left eye and knee, if you flop to your right hip, it's going to roll away. And then see if you can pick up the left foot, maybe have a handful to it, maybe take it into the crook of the arm. Take your breath, especially when it gets intense. We can learn to turn to the breath through the intensity of the postures. We'll be more apt to turn to the breath with the intensity we face in life. Train yourself here. Go ahead and remove 
the hand from the foot, swirl back around to face the front, curl the back toes, see it at that point. Exhale, shift forward, lower down to your chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog. And we're going to do still again. So go ahead and still down. Slide your hands out. Separate your feet out. And then prop back up. So really, the intention is different from yin to yang. Active to passive. Active poses are more about how we're aligning the skeleton, how we're engaging the muscles. Yin is more about exercising the connective tissues. Exhale, still back down. Enough to slide the legs closer to be parallel. Your hands at the base of your ribs. Drop back up to upward facing dog. Curl the toes. Pluck up plank. Exhale. Adho Mukhasana downward facing dog. Maybe bring the feet slightly closer together. Inhale, hold your left leg up. Strike downward scorpion. Unroll the hip, lower the left foot. Inhale, elevate your right leg. Downward scorpion to the right. Good, descend your right foot. Descend both knees. Walk your hands back towards your knees. Separate your thighs. Big toes touching. Right arm's gonna slide out initially to take the left arm to thread under, lower to your left temple and ear, and then lift your right arm, circle that arm and thread it behind your back. Drop down towards gravity. When we're being active and positioning ourselves here, you may find that your hips are slightly up, and they can drop lower. Submit yourself towards this force, this invisible force. And I think that's important, right? We, we know gravity exists, even though it's invisible. Same thing I want you to think about with these layers of our being. The first one is the visible, the physical body. The other four are more subtle and are invisible. But they can be felt and experienced. That's why we should really lean in and trust our intuitive voice. Getting a different action with each arm. And I want you to relieve your right arm for now. Slide it back and let it rest near the face. Just be with the left side. 
your teeth or jaw are tight, you may want to take a cleansing breath. Slide your right hand closer to the mouth and then push through that palm to unthread the left arm. Slide your left hand forward, slip your right arm under, drop to the right side of the face. Pick up the left arm, loop it behind your back, and be here. Let your left arm release. Slide your left hand back closer to the mouth, unthread that right arm. Walk the knees closer together. Slide your hands forward, prop up to table before striking down with easy dong. We're going to close out this very long sun salutation. From now we're facing dog, you can walk, lunge, or float the feet to the top, but we're coming to art at Uttanasana, so straight leg, straight back. Exhale, release. Inhale, Utkatasana chair. Exhale, hands to heart center. And you're going to cross your left leg over the right. And then see if you can pick up that left foot like a kickstand. Fixating your gaze at one spot. Uncross and recross, right leg over the left. Use the ball of the foot or the mouth of the big toe to start with. And then maybe lift it off the floor. Right toe taps down, and then we're going to bring the hands down, left knee down, untuck the left toes, sit back, and that right leg is staying crossed over, but elevate the knee more to be flat on that foot that's crossed over. Yep. Hug that knee or thigh in with your left arm. Take the right hand behind your back. Ardha Matsi and you can also take the elbow to the outside of the knee and fly the hand up. 
This mudra means no fear. Fear not. I know. I just made a post about that to remind people who are inundated in fear, fear not, be not afraid. I grew up in the Baptist so fear and everything. You know, isn't that funny how church induces fear, but yet the Bible says fear not, be not afraid? Yeah. Hundreds of times, right? How many did you say? 364, I think. It's how many times it says you're not going to have By far the most high. Yeah. It's a good message to get out. Exhale and wind. All right. So obviously, we're not going to stand up and try to come down in that you know, magical way <laughs> again, <laughs> unless you just really want to. We'll just flop back onto the hands. Flip the leg, positioning, position our seat, ground the left foot, hug the knee in, reinvest in the length of your back, and then twist to your left. So the right hand, you can keep hugging the thigh in, or you can lift it up for this mudra. The name Abhaya Mudra is coming into mind, but that may not be the right Sanskrit term. But for some reason, that's coming to my head. So here we usually bring in the affirmation radiate my love, goodwill, compassion to soul, friends everywhere. And we'll add in be not afraid. Right. Exhale, when you unwind, we need a counter for the twist. So we're going to recline to the back, grab the feet, or Ananda Balasada. And it's actually kind of perfect. We're ending with the pose that says Ananda in it, blissful baby or happy baby pose, because the theme for today is the Ananda Maya Pocha. Now, if you come back on Wednesday, we're going to end with Yoga Nidra. We'll have a physical practice, but we'll end with a very sweet, long Shavasana. It's all sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bringing your low back. One last breath. And we are ready for our relaxation. So, if you wanted to be yin today in your corpse pose, it's a little different than the regular corpse. The feet are a little wider apart. And the arms are overhead in a Y shape. I actually love the way this feels, but you may not. Your shoulders might not love it. Maybe you need a restorative back bend. So, Art, if you slide your arms out a little wider, this one doesn't go down. It doesn't, yeah. It's working on it, right? Broken in four places. Would you like me to put a rolled blanket under it to give it a little bit of support? I think it's good for it. It's trying to. Relax. It'll open up the connective tissue exactly. to make sure. It's just good for it to do. Okay. I'm getting there, but it took a while. I broke it four places in August of 21 or 20. Wow. So I could do everything again, including swimming and pull ups, but it's still a little bit. Take your time settling into the position that's speaking to you today. And that's going to allow your body to let go.
your goal in the next few minutes is to drop to the innermost layer to see if you can at least touch upon or get a glimpse for even a moment of this ecstasy of this bliss that encases the soul.
deep breath in. Breathe it out. Hug your knees to you. Embracing yourself warmly. Hold on side of the body. Come up to a seat. Sitting upright. Hopefully the yin posture has helped you to get more grounded. Hopefully you're able to let go of something mentally, physically, or emotionally. Hopefully the heart openers lifted your mood. Hopefully you were able to tap into these various layers, including the list. Join your hands together for prayer. The light, the love that I hold within my heart bows humbly and respectfully to the love and the light that you hold within yours. Namaste. Namaste.